Hi, sixth graders, it's Mrs. Reed for Tuesday, April 28th. Whoops, sorry, my slides weren't at the beginning here. Let me start on screen one. I hope all of you guys are doing good. Hello, amazing sixth graders. Shout out to all of you that are trying your best to complete the lessons. A lot of you are working really hard and I'm really proud of you. I know um, everybody's trying to do their best. I miss not being able to be at school with you, but I hope you are making the best of this situation. I am thinking of you. Know that I think of you often and smile. I hope you have a great day today and find something good to do. Make sure, please, today we're reviewing the Inca. It's just day two of the Inca. Make sure that you listen to the song again and really pay attention to the information. The picture is of the city Machu Picchu. And then also read the slides and follow directions carefully. Reread this chart, kind of go over the notes that we learned about the Inca from the, uh, from the other day. And then if you have somebody to read to, you can share. It's more fun to talk about the Inca and share. These are pictures from the Inca Discovery Magazine. If we were in the classroom, I'd have the magazines for you to read. Um, but these are just important clips that I have of them. So the present day empire is located, and then there will be a slide that kind of summarizes them. The Inca Empire was located in South America on the west side around Cusco. Cusco is the capital city in Peru, what is now the country of Peru, and parts of Chile, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Argentina, right along the Andes Mountains. The ancestors, the Amara Indians, are still there, and they speak Quechua, which is the language of the Inca still today in parts of Bolivia and Ecuador in Peru. The geography is the Andes Mountains that are steep, rocky, some of the second steepest mountains in the world with high elevations and the longest mountain range in the world. Uh, the second question is going to be, or the second page is about Machu Picchu, that hidden city. Machu Picchu are ruins that a lot of people, it's a very famous, it's one of the seventh ancient wonders of the world um, that people will travel from all over to come to. A lot of people believe the area is kind of mystical when they visit. But what makes it special in the Inca Empire is that uh, it was someplace that maybe the Inca went once in a while, but not all the time. So when the Spanish, when Pizarro came with his men to conquer the Inca, the Spanish didn't find Machu Picchu, so it remained undisturbed. So it was ruins that was in the form of the Inca um, and left, so it left information. Archaeologists couldn't get to it. Hiram Bingham was traveling through South America in 1911 after South America had won its independence. Once Pizarro takes over the Inca in the early 1500s, from through the 1500s, 1600s, and 1700s, in the beginning of the 1800s, over 300 years, Spain ruled its colonies, restricting anybody from going in there because they were hunting for gold. And they were afraid if anybody came in from England, they would try, archaeologists might uncover gold and not tell them about it, might steal it. So it was only the people that had the right from the king or queen of Spain uh, and the rulers of the Spanish empire that could be there. They didn't allow people in like archaeologists and historians to study. So it wasn't until 1911 that Machu Picchu was discovered. And it's still kind of a mystery. They don't know if it was a vacation home, um, maybe a religious place that the emperor would go to to seek advice from the priests, um, if it was a school where young girls study, if it was where sacrifices took place. So there's different theories about what Machu Picchu was. It was a lot, we call it the lost city of the Inca. It was really was never lost. It didn't move around, but lost because the uh, Spanish didn't uncover it. And if they would have uncovered it, they destroyed most of the Inca artifacts. They destroyed most of the Aztec and Mayan artifacts. Um, so it was something that was left undestroyed. So it gives us a better picture as archaeologists study it. They're able to get more information. The Inca did not have writing. The Aztec and the Mayans had their glyphs, their symbols that we've translated. So we get a lot more information through that. The Inca is more mysterious because they didn't have writing, but they are considered a civilization because they had the quipus, which were strings and knots, and they could pass information, but through numbers, through a systems of knots and string. So it wasn't writing that they would make with pictures, but through knots. Those knots were placed in specific spots and lengths of string indicated different messages. So kind of a code system through the quipus. Um, it may have been a religious city. It may have been a vacation home. And one of the emperor names that you will hear, always a fun name to say, Pachacuti. Pachacuti was the first great ruler of the Inca Empire that united. There were lots of different tribes in Western 
South America, and he united the tribes to make the great Inca empire. So he, and he was kind of the third son, younger son. And if you watch the movie that's optional this week, Max is Missing, they will talk about Pachacutec or Pachacuti. That's the same name. They just say it in different ways. Um, for that first emperor, he was kind of the third son, kind of the smaller runt of the sons of the emperor at that time. But he's the one that goes out and fights and saves the emperor or saves the empire, pulls it together from tribes that come to try to fight. Inca laws were really strict. And if you might wonder why laziness was such a serious crime, because if everyone didn't work hard, they didn't survive. So as you read through these laws, there were laws where you had to serve part of the year because that's how they achieved building the roads and the rope bridges and the things that were good for everybody, for the military to be able to get through and protect them. They worked together and they had to. Punishment for laziness was you might be pushed off a cliff. It was serious. So make sure you read these slides carefully to get all the information from the magazine. So there was a MEDA law that required adults to spend part of the year working for the government. That would be might be building roads, the terraces that are still used today. So we benefit from their work. The Inca had to set aside two thirds of their crops. So they only kept a third of their crop to feed their family and two thirds went to the government. And that was usually for the soldiers, for the military million in the Inca empire numbered in the millions. If an Inca were lazy, they could be stoned to death or pushed off a cliff. It was punishable, very serious. Some of the accomplishments of the, they learned how to make those rope bridges uh, that saved lots of times instead of going all the way down to the bottom of the valley and all the way back up thousands and thousands of feet up the mountain. They could cut across and save time with those rope bridges, the roads they built. Sorry. The canals for irrigation, they used just gravity from the top of the mountains where there would be snow-capped mountains, even near the equator. Um, they would get used as that water runoff. They would run it to the terraces where they planted. So that little, these could be used as roads for people to walk on, but then the water would run through the canal and be directed right at the plants. So they, they had a pretty advanced science for aqueducts and irrigation. That was important to surviving and having good crops. And their quipus, their system. So these are some of the accomplishments that you should know about the Inca. Quipus were an important accomplishment to keep accurate records using a system of knots and strings. There were terraces, which were the stone steps to farm. They farmed the flat part of the step. Rope bridges to help them get places faster. They saved time for the military and for the messengers. They had a system of messengers that would run like a relay race. Each messenger would only run a mile and then pass the kipu or the message to the next person, and they would run the next mile. And they could take a message hundreds of miles every day and get it from like out from the soldiers to the emperor or from the emperor back out to the leaders of the army. This goes over, read it carefully. This is about Pizarro, the Spanish conquistador coming to conquer the Inca. And the leader at that time, there was some civil war kind of going on in the Inca empire, two brothers fighting over power. Atahuapa is the leader that took control and he's the one that will face Pizarro when he arrives. So this is a little bit about how Pizarro conquered the Inca. Make sure you read it carefully. Um, the, of course, they came with cannons and guns and the Inca didn't quite know what to do. When you finish, oh, these are echoes that we still see today. So that chuño where they would freeze dry potatoes, you'll still see people in Bolivia doing that today in the Andes Mountains. These reed boats that you see up in the corner, the top left corner, are pretty interesting. If you can imagine trying to weave like reeds, if you play a wood an instrument like a clarinet, you have reeds or a saxophone, they would weave them tight enough that they would be waterproof. You can imagine how hard they, how much, they, how it took to weave them like a basket to make it waterproof. And then they last about six weeks or six months, I believe. We, we read about those in the book as well. So echoes that we still see today for the Inca, the weaving, the roads, the reed boats, the quipus, and Inca ceremonies are all throughout the Andes through those countries. This is a chart to help you if you can just study, read this slide carefully. You don't have to copy it down. If you want to copy it down, it's a great way to remember it. But so optional to copy it down. Um, but this kind of helps you sort out what areas are known as the Mayans, what were the accomplishments of the Aztec, and what were the accomplishments of the Inca. It's important to keep those three early American civilizations separate. 
So you're going to complete today. You can either click on the link in your slide or you can go to the agenda and click on it. For 2820, the Inca check-in, and that just lets me know, and it's going to ask you questions about those slides that you read and about the Inca today. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you, Mrs. Reed.